allegiance. Davidson? <coughs> Here. 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 Please note that Dr. Carter Mola is here. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> I always speak the truth. We had the distinctive honor of recognizing the 2015 Wall of Honor recipients this evening. And their careers were are so outstanding that it took a little bit more time than anticipated to honor them. So please express, I would like to express my deep apologies to all of you for our late attendance this evening. I believe this is probably the first and the last time that will happen. Board members, I draw your attention to agenda letter D, the Watertown Board of Education regular meeting minutes from October 13th, 2015. Before I call for a motion, I want to make note under item D, minutes, motion presented by has been changed to Mr. Makowski. Motion second by has been changed by Mr. Orsini. Do we have a motion? Madam Chair, I move that the board approve of the minutes. Mm -hmm. Housekey, is there a second? It's me. Um, second. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Orsini. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? One abstention with Ms. Wilk <clears throat> and Ms. Rinaldi. Any other abstentions? Okay. Motion carries with two abstentions. I'd like to move to letter E, award recognition. Tonight, the Watertown Board of Education has the pleasure of recognizing Polk students this evening for their student of their month, of the month achievement. We're very excited to have them here and officially recognize them in front of the Board of Education and the public this evening for all of their hard work. It should be congratulated. Dr. Cardamola will be calling the students up one by one by name. And if they're comfortable in doing so, they'll come up to the desk here and shake Dr. Cardamola's hand and I'd be happy to hand them their certificate. Dr. Cardamola? I'm sure you're all comfortable doing that, even though I couldn't get in here on time to tell you that ahead of time. <laughs> we all know each other, so as Mrs. Grady said, please come right up here when I call your name. And we will break very briefly to take a picture at, after we're done calling through all the names so that your parents can all have a picture of you with your award. So we have fifth graders tonight who were recognized as student of the month for September. And our first is Joshua Atchison. <laughs> Kaya Bodorenko. <laughs> Alyssa Calabrese. Abigail, I'm, I'm sorry, I skipped one head. Chloe Farrington. <laughs> Abigail Lilly. <laughs> Adriana Melaragno. Gabriella Perez. And finally, Jordan Williams. No, Jordan? There he is. Oh, I didn't see him there. Hi, Jordan. I'm so proud of you. 
right here and we'll break him down. We'll make it easy for you this time. <laughs> Have all the students. Jordan, come back. If we could have all of the students come up. Is Mrs. Feckety here? <coughs> you want to come up also, Mrs. Feckety? We'll, we'll take a recess, take a brief recess to take a photo with the students. Those of you that are standing, we do have a variety of chairs over here. If you don't like where they're positioned, feel free to move them, make a new front row. We're casual. We want everybody to be comfortable. And again, congratulations to our Polk Students of the Month. If you do move over to here, you'll still be able to see the presentation that goes on. So thank you again for coming out tonight. We now have some seats in the front row. <laughs> And moving on to Agenda F, report from Student Council Representative Mancini is not here this evening. Mrs. Man uh, Ms. Mancini is not here, and Dr. Cardamola will cover her report. Just one moment. Dr. Cardamola, whenever you are ready. Thank you. Again, excuse our tardiness coming in and mine specifically they had to take a few photographs of the people that were honored this evening and the people that accepted the awards i encourage you to go out and see the wall of honor some way even if it's tonight on your way out it it's a wonderful way for us to honor the people from this community who have done great things i will primarily give the report some additions that Ms. Mancini would have given tonight because she could not be here with us tonight. Um, at John Trumbull this week, our students worked on becoming experts at reading nonfiction texts and worked very hard on the skills that sometimes I think may surprise people that people, students, our students will do in kindergarten to second grade. Notice and learn questions about texts, connect information across books on the same topic, and work to build context knowledge of unknown words. That was our week wrap at John Trumbull. At Judson School, we had a number of events. We had third grade students at Judson School participating in the Taft Community Service Day on October 19th. Three of our classes traveled to Taft School, and two classes were joined by Taft volunteers at Judson. All students participated in various activities such as math, creative writing, and storytelling. This is an annual event, and it's part of a community partnership that has existed many years with Taft. Also, we were given a grant from the Flanders Nature Center for fourth grade students. The grant was limited to a total of two fourth grade classes. So we have one fourth grade class at Judson that was able to participate and one fourth grade class at Polk that was able to participate. And Mrs. Matthews' class is the fourth grade class that has been going. They went this week and they are continuing their experiences and lab work associated with learning about nature and the environment saw them and some of their results and a lot of excitement over at Polk, I will say. And also, I'm sorry, excuse me, a lot of excitement over at Judson when I visited Mrs. Matthews' class last week. And also, our fourth grade teachers across the district working to put in some of the same enrichment activities into the fourth grade classes, even though, obviously, we the grant only allowed one class from each school. At Polk, we had the same Taft Community Service Day. Some of the students went to Taft and some stayed back at Polk again with volunteers. And on that side, it's Mr. Starbucks fourth grade class that has gone to the Flanders Nature Center. I visited both Polk and Judson last week and we 
had at Polk a student council meeting t on Friday to plan the fun run. Uh, this is a very exciting event at Polk, and the short of it is that our student council members uh, work to be elected running for office, the fun run. Swift Middle School, we had 24 students who were honored this week as Soaring Eagles. They are nominated to be Soaring Eagles by staff members by displaying acts of kindness or compassion, taking on extra responsibilities, showing dedication to their studies, and possibly improving their behavior if there was anything to improve. <laughs> of course not. These Eagles soar, which is an acronym for stand out above the rest. Also, we have some exciting um, things going on with the Verizon Challenge over at Swift. We have sixth, eighth grade students who are competing in the Verizon Challenge. This is a uh, Verizon sponsored activity where students develop, develop an app. It's part of a national contest. So we have six students who are competing in this with the help of their teacher, Joe Kuziak. They, they um, pulled their peers and they created a plan for an app that can be used to track healthy choices. Now their next step is to develop a promotional package and send it off to Verizon. If, if and when our app is chosen, the engineers at MIT will work with the winners and develop the app for general use. So good luck to our students who are participating from SWIFT. Also, just recognize a student at SWIFT who I think deserves mention. A seventh grader, Chelsea Betts, honored for all of her hard work over the past summer. She completed all badges in the Newzella Summer Reading Challenge. This is an accomplishment only 45 students in the United States achieved. There's over 100,000 students that participated in this. And one of our <clears throat> students won one of the awards that they will give for participation. So congratulations <clears throat> to Swift and to Chelsea. At the high school, we had astronaut Rick Mastracchio come and speak to the students last week. I was here for that. I'd like to again thank the Watertown Foundation and our, our partnership with Watertown Foundation, Watertown Public Libraries, and Taft School, because that is what made it possible for us to have him come and speak that morning. He was later speaking at the Watertown Foundation dinner. He was the annual keynote speaker. I saw him there also with uh, members of the Board of Education, several community members, many community members, I should say. But the talk that he gave here at the high school was phenomenal. He came and spoke directly here to a live audience, but we did a simulcast to other schools in the district from grades three to eight. So the majority of our students got to see Rick come and speak, and he spoke about his path to becoming an astronaut, and also um, the future of the space program. He showed students videos and pictures of space, many of which he had taken himself, so they had a very first hand appeal to them, and the students just loved it. I, I thank again, I can't thank enough the foundation and Taft and the library for partnering with us to do that. Also here at the high school, the National Honor Society will host their now annual Safe Halloween for elementary age students next Tuesday, October 27th from 6 to 8 o'clock. As you know, this is usually a very well attended event, so if you are going to bring out your students, please be patient. They work hard here at the high school on getting them all through, and we ask that you bring a canned good to donate to the local food shelter if you do come to participate in Safe Halloween. Also. At Watertown High School, we are continuing the process for NEASC reaccreditation. Um, in no on November 3rd, we have a committee of stakeholders that we put out invitations for some of the required um, stakeholders across various groups, including Board of Education members, to participate in helping the standards reports be written. So again, board members, I know I sent that out in the packet. Please consider working uh, with us here on that committee at the high school. most important stuff I have to share from this stuff from the school this week. Um, we have also on the agenda, I'm going to go out of order a tiny bit here because of the number of people we have with us tonight because we are also going to quickly recap what was done at the policy meeting before the board of before the Board of Education meeting, before the Wall of Honor meeting, we had a policy meeting this evening to update some of our policies to be in line with state legislation that has changed. I will put that off until after the kindergarten committee does the presentation. I will also um, 
table for the time being the Board of Education meeting dates if you're in agreement that we move out of order. I would, I would suggest um, that we move both the policy and the scheduling after item H, after the public participation. Does that sound good to everybody? Okay. Great. Okay, so, Dr. Parlato. Thank you. Thank you. This evening's presentation is about full day kindergarten in the Watertown Public Schools in the 2016-17 school year. Um, and it's the work of the Exploratory Study Committee um, in looking at full day kindergarten. I'd like to begin, first of all, by thanking all the community members who've come out um, this evening. It's no easy feat to get out of your house in the evening and come to a meeting that might be a little long. So I thank you for that, and particularly to our John Trumbull teachers who came out to uh, support the full day K program. So thank you. We're going to begin this evening with a glimpse of kindergarten in 2015 which is a wondrous and unique year for young children, where really something miraculous happens every single day. We are gonna meet Olivia and Miles, two kindergarten students, and they're demonstrating the academic and social foundations that will stay with them through their 13-year journey as learners in our school district. They're entering only their eighth week of formal schooling, but you'd never know it. So you'll watch Olivia and Miles. You'll also watch their peers behind them who are working quite independently, even after only the eighth week of formal schooling. They entered school in late August with an awful lot of hope for what would happen in school, with maybe a little fear of what might happen in school, but also with a tremendous sense of possibility for the next thrilling event that's going to happen at John Trumbull Primary School. Olivia and Miles and their peers have become experts in several things. They're experts already in classroom and hallway expectations. They're becoming very good conversationalists with adults and their peers. And as you'll see in this video, they're learning a very central concept in mathematics, which is the value of the number 10 and how to use number 10 as the basis for all of our mathematical knowledge. Good, and it matches your number. What number does that say? And Miles, how many do you have? Tell Olivia how many you have. And how many are in the top right here? If I take that one away, how many are in there? How did you know there was 10? You didn't even count. Oh, you're so smart. And now how many are there? 11. And Olivia, can you tell Miles? If your number is more than 10 or less than 10, we talked about that in math earlier today. How do you know? Yeah, there's 10 and then more. John Miles, tell Olivia if yours is more than 10 or less than 10. He has one filled up and then one. With children like Olivia and Miles, um, along with their peers, and also thinking of future generations of Watertown students, the full day kindergarten exploratory study committee began its work. The study committee was made of 20 different members uh, representing grades K through two. There was representation from each grade level. In addition, there was the reading specialist, the mathematics specialist, and special education teachers who were on the committee along with the building administrators and myself. The committee was co-chaired by Ms. Mecca and me. The 20 members of the committee decided on the following purposes for the committee's work. To review current practices and research about full day kindergarten. To discuss the impact of full day kindergarten on John Trumbull Primary School. Number three is a very important one for the work of the committee to understand the benefits of full day kindergarten for young learners. And finally, to understand the perspectives of teachers, administrators, and parents about the impact of full day kindergarten on John Trumbull Primary School. The committee, which has met four times since the end of August, has taken the following steps. 
So we thought about the current program structure at John Trumbull, which is a half-day kindergarten program. We looked at the financial impact of a full-day kindergarten program upon the school district. We looked at practices both statewide and regionally in terms of full-day kindergarten. We looked at research and what the research says about the benefits of full-day kindergarten for young children. One major part of our presentation this evening is what are our core beliefs about kindergarten and what, how does, do our beliefs show up in how we practice that each day. The committee has some findings based upon looking at research and their own experience in discussing that. We talked to Ms. Mecca and Ms. Gaelic about how full day kindergarten might work in school. As I said, we had input from pre-K to grade two, including special education and specialists. Today, there is a meeting with Ms. Mecca and nine area preschool directors and teachers, and they saw parts of this presentation um, and provided their input and ideas. And at the November PTO meeting, there will be um, an opportunity for parents to hear more about full day kindergarten. Um, and the area preschool um, directors will invite their families as well. We decided to begin with a summary of the committee's findings. And so first and foremost, the very top bullet is the most important point that the committee has found. A full day of kindergarten provides the advantage of additional time to maximize the academic and social growth of young learners in their first year of formal schooling. So far and away, in all the research, in all of our discussion, in people's practical experience, full day kindergarten benefits students by the advantage of time. However, in a full day kindergarten program, it doesn't necessarily mean that the academic demands will increase automatically. However, there are increased opportunities for structured and unstructured play, and most importantly, a less rushed pace to the existing curriculum. So it allows the curriculum that exists to be spread out in a more appropriate fashion. The committee also found that kindergarten students are capable of remaining in school for a full day, and that's because there is a combination of active and quiet periods during that full day period. The committee found that there is a vast amount of national research about the value of full day kindergarten, the value lying in academic achievement, social growth, as well as their engagement in school. And we're fortunate with the last bullet that there is adequate space at John Trumbull Primary School to accommodate full day kindergarten. <coughs> so looking around the state in, in districts that have adopted full day kindergarten over the past 10 years, space is always a big concern for them. Um, and fortunately, that is not one of ours. So that's, that's very good news for us. The next few slides that you're going to see are the committee's core beliefs about kindergarten. Young children benefit from a balanced curriculum that's comprised of direct instruction, projects, learning centers, and student-centered activities, as well as workshop instruction. <coughs> workshop instruction is comprised of a mini lesson, small group instruction, and both independent and partner reading or writing. Daily workshop instruction is provided in both reading and writing. Students benefit from time to explore concepts they've been taught and to demonstrate their learning through projects, centers, and other activities. Kindergarten should develop the whole child, a comprehensive program that honors social emotional development with more time, as well as indoor and outdoor activity along with physical movement. <clears throat> Young children learn more effectively with fewer transitions during the day. More time under the guidance of one classroom teacher for all students is extremely beneficial and also minimizes anxiety. It minimizes the volume of transition currently experienced for a smoother school day. Opportunities for a balanced curriculum to develop the whole child with fewer daily transitions are supported by the advantage of time in full day kindergarten. The advantage of time in full day kindergarten enhances opportunities to ensure the following things, developmentally appropriate pacing, so there's less rush through activities. Provide a better balance of active and quiet periods to support a developmentally appropriate environment for young learners. And provide meaningful socialization experiences while building self-confidence related to school. Students in full day care are afforded more time to apply and practice skills they've been taught. They are able to read, write, and do math with their peers for greater amounts of time. 
There's more time for students to engage in hands-on activities as well as learning games. Young children learn best through discovery, exploration, and active learning. Asking questions, learning to make choices, interacting with peers and the teacher, and problem solving, as well as structured and unstructured play. These teach planning, language development, turn-taking, motor skills, organization, and number concepts. Play is the important work of childhood. Opportunities for play are supported by the advantage of time in full-day kindergarten. We do have another video for you, but I just wanted to read a little intro for you. As you'll see in this video, our kindergarten students learn through play. In this video, Chloe and Brendan are at the sandwich shop. They practice reading the menu, writing orders, and following directions to make a sandwich. <coughs> These play experiences allow students valuable opportunities to practice speaking and listening skills, along with a host of other life skills, such as planning, organizing, and turn-taking. <laughs> I see you have a smile from ear to ear as I do. I've seen that video probably about 15 times and I can't stop smiling every time I see it. We're very lucky. Our students are so very sweet. The next slide, um, I'm going to pause for a minute just to let you read before I talk. You'll see the current schedule as well as the proposed 1617 schedule. A full day schedule will allow time for students to engage in a morning meeting where they practice all skills taught and build on speaking and listening skills as well as social skills and literacy skills. As you can see on the proposed schedule, there's a separate time for readers and writers workshop which allows students time to delve deeper into the curriculum. On the proposed math schedule, you'll see that the time is almost doubled. By lengthening the math block to 60 minutes, students are able to meet in small groups to strengthen skills. The committee also did some research about full day kindergarten, and this is a summary of the results. In a full day kindergarten, in full day kindergarten programs studied across the country, achievement is increased in reading, mathematics, spelling, and identification of numbers and colors in the kindergarten year. Standardized test scores for students in grades three and eight are higher for students who participated in a full day program. Students have better overall attendance through grade five if they have participated in a full day kindergarten program. And last, students in a full day kindergarten program demonstrate more independence and report more active engagement in school through grade five.
last week I spoke with the department, um, the State Department of Education Office of Early Childhood Education uh, to gather the information on the next slide. So out of 169 towns and cities, there are two districts that do not offer full day kindergarten programs, Watertown and Plainfield. Stated another way, in our district reference group of 24 towns who are economically similar, all of the other towns in our district reference group have full day kindergarten. Stated another way, looking at it regionally, um, the following towns have had full day kindergarten for at least two years. Uh, Litchfield since 2007, Plymouth, Thomaston, Woodbury, Bethlehem, Middlebury, Southbury, Warren, Morris, and Goshen, and Waterbury have had um, full day kindergarten programs for all students for at least two years. The next slides look at some of the financial numbers that are associated with the implementation of a full day kindergarten program. <coughs> the first slide is salaries and benefits, and these are projected projections for the 2016-17 school year. So as you can see, um, there would be a need for three additional classroom teachers <coughs> to have a full day kindergarten program for all students in our district. And you can see the cost of that. Art, music, physical education, and special education um, can be uh, deployed with existing staff. Instructional paraprofessionals would need an additional three for the three class, kindergarten, additional kindergarten classrooms. Total salaries and benefits then are $285,000. There are some additional costs for full day kindergarten in terms of curricular materials, new furniture, um, for a total of $75,000. The curricular materials are um, additional copies of the reading and writing workshop materials that we have, additional math workbooks and textbooks that we use, and technologies that supports the teaching and learning in the classroom. That's, so a total for the additional cost is $75,000. A summary of projected costs then, the staffing is $285,000, additional cost $75,000. There's a fuel savings of $5,000 since the midday bus runs will be eliminated in a full day program and a revenue loss of $238,384 that results from the elimination of the half-day daycare program that we have that is tuition-based. So it would be the loss of the tuition from the half-day daycare program for a total projected cost of $593,384,000. To ensure the best possible educational experiences for all <laughs> Watertown students, the committee made the following recommendations. The committee recommends the implementation of full day kindergarten for all students for the 2016-17 school year. And as such, the committee recommends including full day kindergarten in the proposed district budget for 2016-17. I thank the board members for their time and um, attention in the exploratory study committee's work. I'd like to thank our Director of Curriculum, Dr. Janet Parlato, and our Don Trumbull Primary School Principal, Mrs. Laura Mecca, for that presentation, and to the entire committee for the amount of work that has gone into this. I know it hasn't been an easy task, and we, the board, on behalf of the board, I'd like to thank you for that, and open it up to questions for board members. I was just wondering if any uh, research was done as to how this would be funded. He asked if any research had been done as to how this would be funded. In our general fund or grants or I'm not, can you clarify just a bit for me? Um, well, if, if uh, the total cost is $593,000, I was, not that, I don't want to sound as though I'm against this because I really think it's an excellent idea, but I was just wondering how um, the whole, you know, this would be, this money would be, uh, come, how the town would come up with this money to pay for this? Would this be directly from? Defer to Dr. Cardamola. Yeah. I mean, was, was this discussed at all? I mean, I discussed it certainly yeah. with the superintendent. Yeah. And, okay. you know, I'll defer to the superintendent once yeah. I say that. Okay. The good news and why we're doing this in October is we're just starting the whole budget development yeah. process. Mm -hmm. So this allows us to have that assumption in there yeah. as well, we're looking for kind of, how we're going to 
to really make it work. What I'm asking is this would be, would this directly translate to an increase in property taxes or would other programs be cut to make up for this? I don't think we could say that yet. <laughs> okay. Dr. Parlotta was right. Mr. Gabardello can't say it yet because like everything else that comes across as a, as a possibility in the budget, we have to prioritize and look at the entire expenditures of the district as a whole and also try to determine if there are areas where we might be able to realize some cost savings so that this isn't a flat add-on line to the budget because certainly uh, I and I think all of us are as concerned as, as you are with the question that you're asking um, when you look at it as much of the right thing that this is to do I think that, that we would all agree we have to figure out how we're going to fund it um, we have looked into the possibility of grants we have looked into any possibility of money from the state to assist us at this point there is no funding available and uh, part of that is most likely due to the fact that we are one of the two last districts in the state that have not implemented full day kindergarten it doesn't mean we'll stop looking for anything that might assist us even if it's or furniture um, but this number is something that we will take into consideration as we move into the budget season and begin the budget workshops and all I can say is that we will do our very best to reduce costs where we can so that this is not as much of an, an increase in part honestly because of the revenue loss as you see if it weren't for the revenue loss of the paid full day daycare program it actually costs the district about half of what the final cost is. Thank you. The board members have questions. Mr. Murkowski. Dr. Carnamola, are there any deadlines in the future which the district would have to offer full day kindergarten? The state has been talking about mandating um, full day kindergarten for several years in the um, early in the last legislative session. It was a part of some legislation um, for the previous school year. And so we began the conversations then because honestly, we believed that we might be mandated to do it even in the current year that we're in. And I believe that may also be why that number was reduced to only two districts because at this time last year, it was more like 11, 11 13, if I remember correctly, districts that did not have full day kindergarten. That's right. Down to only two because people have been awaiting that requirement to come from the state. At this point, I, we do not have a requirement, but, and I can't surmise as to what they'll do moving forward, but I can tell you that it has been a part of legislation several <laughs> times in the past few years that has been um, reversed. We've had conversations with both uh, Senator Kane and Representative Berthel to um, get firsthand information as often as possible, and they have been very forthcoming with that. Also, in regards to searching for any potential funds that may be available to help us. Um, but in terms of the mandate, you know, the word is that it could come at any time and as soon as this year. I also don't want to lose the point within the legislation and within the financial piece, though, that the belief of the committee and borne out by the research is that it's the right thing to do for children. Board members have questions? I have a couple. <laughs> um, when you put together this presentation. Is there a second piece that you'll be coming back to the board with, or is this the complete presentation? The committee will continue to meet and we'll have an update probably in January or February. Okay, I and imagine. what is what further work will the committee? I think it's important for the committee to look at more research, more examples from actual districts in terms of how they implemented it in our state. So looking at, you know, even places that are close by. Litchfield has been doing it since 2007. Let's look at what they did. Not presuming that it's automat that we're automatically going to have full day kindergarten, but it's important to be prepared as well. So I want to look at the the manner of implementation in districts that are socioeconomically like us, but also nearby us. I'm particularly interested in um, we have so many students that come into our district that um, 
have a lot of anxiety related to the amount of work, the amount of curriculum that we um, have to sh share with them and, and hope they learn at the right pace and at the right time um, to meet the right requirements for each grade level and the standardized testing that takes place. I was struck by your point about the more time and the more guidance that the students would receive in the full-day kindergarten program doesn't necessarily equate to more work, but it equates to more time and more guidance, which to me, unlike this evening, <laughs> seems much less stressful. <laughs> Minimizing any level of anxiety is certainly opening up the kids to a, a greater ability to learn. And um, if you could speak to wh how we handle that now and what it's like in a, in a program now that we have for kindergartners. How does the anxiety play into that? That's Mrs. Mecca's expertise. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I will tell you that um, when our children come to kindergarten, we do have anxiety at both ends, whether they choose the full day with half-day kindergarten, half-day daycare, and half-day. But the children who have are in the half-day program, they're experiencing more transition. So they might be nervous going to daycare. Then they're put at the daycare center, they're put on a school bus to come to John Trumbull. Then you, typically, most of our half-day kids go somewhere at the, after uh, the session has ended. So we have structures in place. My school psychologists do relax clubs. And um, you know, Jen and I are always available. We hand deliver kids. We actually just, we think we're done with our criers. We had children crying for about seven weeks just because it's, it's a hard time for kids. But when they're there all day minimizing the transitions, it's one transition you get to. Mommy drops off. We get the child to class, whether it be my school psychologist, the assistant principal, my wonderful teachers, because even uh, first and second grade teachers are known if they have that greeter duty, they will grab a child and say, oh, I, I'm feeling lonely. Do you want to walk down the hall with me? So we have things in place for them. But the advantage of time, I feel is the best gift to minimize that anxiety piece because they are so little. You know, and then sometimes they don't want to leave. Sometimes they cry because they don't want to get on the bus and go back to daycare. Then we have that whole piece too, so. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, my last question in terms of what we're currently doing. There is no curriculum difference between our half-day kindergarten and our half-day kindergarten. So there's still fulfilling the same level of mm -hmm. curriculum in both of those environments, correct? Yes, that is correct. The curriculum is the same, but in a half-day program, it is much more condensed, where in the full day, they might have time to do um, 20 minutes. I have my teachers here uh, who are building up stamina with kindergartners. Where's a kindergarten teacher? I want you to tell me. The day, today, Kate DeSantis, what is the stamina of a kindergarten teacher? Our 10 minutes. First grade, what is the stamina of first grade? 20 minutes. So they're building up time where in half day kindergarten, they don't have that, the advantage of time to actually sit and read because the teacher's pulling the small group and they're on to the next thing. I mean, I would probably be still zipping up my coat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trying to unzip. We have some coat. of those too, where we're assisting in, you know, getting the backpack on the hook yes, and the, yes. taking the coat off still. And yep. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Your Thank you. Answers. One more time to the board. Are there any questions? Mr. Lambert. Just one quick one. I notice, uh, like in every other grade, you only have one recess <clears throat> for kindergartners. As a grandfather of two twins, kindergartners, you've got to have some energy draining activities for these kids during the day, correct? <laughs> yes, we do. Some they, examples they, of it? I would love to invite you. Have you been to your uh, grandchildren's classes yet? Uh, not, not I am yet. inviting not, you personally. No. I am going to call you tomorrow to set up a visit. So one of those videos was in your granddaughter's classroom, and I actually videoed, the kids knew, I went, as I was going to videotape, I said, you have to ignore Mrs. Mack. I know how much you want to say hi, but when I'm here with my camera, and I told them, I'll, I'll definitely show you the video once we decide. So the kids, um, they knew what, why I was there, but they are busy. Every minute of every day, they are busy, busy, busy doing something, whether they're moving through centers. And it's funny, if you come in, which we'll try to have you come during a center time, and if you say to the kids, what are you doing? They look at you like you're crazy. You are the principal of the building, Mrs. Mecca. Why don't you know what I'm doing? You know, and I always ask because I want to see if they could tell me what they're working on. But we do have, there's lots of movement, movement in the classroom as well. So there's recess and there's a 40-minute special, which um, physical education, they're very... Um, 
gross motor skills are being used. They're very, very involved. But the teachers do it an amazing job because they do it all themselves. They know movement breaks. They use brain pop. They use... Um, I'm they trying use to dance, think. I understand. Yes, Mr. Lawyer, what's the dance? Because I just heard a kindergarten <laughs> class. Go noodle. Popsico. That's what I, I... I won't have him come up and demonstrate, but... Uh, the kindergartners just told me they have, um, we'll try to set that up for you too when you come visit. But I'd invite any of you to come in. If you would like to come in and visit uh, kindergarten and see what happens in a half-day program versus a full-day, um, half-day kindergarten, half-day daycare program, we would love to have you. Thank you. You're welcome. Questions from board members? I just have, actually I have a comment. Um, I didn't live in Watertown District when my daughter went to kindergarten. And we were living in Prospect at that time. And the, we actually sent her to private school, St. Peter and Paul in Southington, mm -hmm. because they had a full, full day, day kindergarten class. And Prospect at that time did not have one. And I'll be honest with you, I think it's a great, great Thank concept. You. And I think it was very good for her. Thank you. It's so. great to hear your support. And I just wanted to point out, I have a large group here that one of my John Trumbull mothers told me she brought parents with her to hear the presentation because they are from the private schools. And that's something they would consider if we went full day. So I understand the need for all parents in living in Oakville and Watertown. Thank you so much for the positive comment. Any other questions or comments? Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. going to move to agenda letter H, our first round of public participation. Any members of the public wish to address the board this evening? There will be two opportunities to do so this evening. This is the first two. The second one comes towards the end of the meeting. If you would like to address the board, please state your name, address, and the topic. And most importantly, speak directly into the microphone so that it can pick up your voice on the recording. Thank you. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Kelly Harper. I'm at 359 Linkfield Road in town. And I'm also, I have the honor of being co-president of the PTO at John Trumbull. And I, I'm, I'm just, before I get started, I just want to just give so much to this community. My son started in Watertown, um, actually almost a year and I started January. Last year as a first grader, we came from another town. And the transition has been nothing short of amazing. These, this president, this principal that you have in place is, I can't even say enough things about her. I joke that I would marry her because she's just <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I know you're already married, but you know. <laughs> um, um, so with that, I'll get started. I prepared some some notes for you. I feel very passionate about this. I do not have any other children that are going coming up in the ranks, but I do care a lot about this town, and I think it's very important that we that we vote in favor, or at least we keep moving forward to expand kindergarten. Um, my son, as I mentioned, came from a magnet school in Glastonbury, and so we didn't have to make this decision. It was just a full day um, environment from the beginning. And I share this with you because the possibility of not having my son in full day wasn't an option. And I can't even imagine when I look at him and remember that time in his life, if he had gone to school for two hours and 45 minutes, it would just not have been enough for him. Um, and I think there's a lot of reasons for this. You know, the, the town now, you guys have to make a decision when you, you have a five-year-old. You have to say, okay, I'm going to do the half day or I'm going to um, expand money out of my own pocket to then pay for a daycare afterward for a full day program. Um, and it isn't even a half day. I think that's the funniest thing I had heard when I you know, first heard about half day. It's two hours and 45 minutes. I work full time. I don't know how many of you get away with a five hour work day is considered a full day. Um, but at any rate, um, as a working parent, it would be easy for me to stand here and say this solves a daycare problem, but that is not why I'm here. I don't think that's even something we need to be talking about. Um, but I'm here because when my second grader is looking at colleges in 2025, um, which is going to be here sooner than any of us want to admit, um, I want our town to be revered as a town that takes education seriously. And it does start with our very young children. Half day worked 30 years ago. Many things have changed in 30 years. The three things I want to talk about tonight, and I, I know we're on schedule, so I won't go crazy, but I um, basically narrowed it down to three topics, technology, common core, and college entrance requirements. These are three things that are going to affect everyone that has children in this community. Technology. Um, my son, who, I, who I've already mentioned and will continue to mention, um, he was, had a smartphone in his hand at the age of three, and I'm sure many of you can relate to this. He swipes to the left, swipes to the right. He knew what to do with that thing when he was three years old. In fact, he now text messages my friends back, which is getting a little bit frightening. 
Um, but the, the point is that technology is, is in a place that we never could have imagined. And you know, being this one of two districts that doesn't have um, full day kindergarten just shows you that you know, technology is changing so much and they're, they are, um, what's gonna be expected of them is even more rigorous than what we were expected of in the, in the 80s when I was in school. Um, aside from that, the next thing I wanna talk about is Common Core. Whether you like it or not, because I know there's a lot of debate about Common Core, it is here and it's here to stay. And I did a little bit of research and I know my friends to the right did some too, so I won't go into too many details. But kindergartners, I thought this was surprising. They're expected to add, subtract, up to 10. They're supposed to spell simple words phonetically and describe measurable attributes of objects such as length and weight. They're expected to distinguish shades of meaning among verbs. They need to know the difference between walking, marching, strutting. I don't even think I know what that is, the difference. Um, and, and prance. Who knew? Um, and how on earth we can expect our teachers to cover this much? I feel like they would just be rushed, like just how I feel right now. Like they would just, just that rush and constant stress of trying to get everything into the, the two hours and 45 minutes. And kindergarten is very important. Um, the, there's actually a recent CNN report that kindergarten behaviors are actually linked to how individuals will, will act as an adult. Um, they did a 20 year examination of 800 children and they watched them from kindergarten to their mid 20s and found a direct link between how they were and interacted in kindergarten garden versus how they do it in adulthood. Um, children that were able to be social and resolve conflicts in kindergarten, they actually were they were more likely to have full-time jobs at the age of 25 and have graduated college. College entrance exams, is, uh, college entrance is the last thing I wanted just to mention. There are more students than ever before enrolling in college. Baby boomers have had children who have had children and things are changing. You need a college degree to be successful in, in most most things that just really change. And that means the college entrance is more, more vigorous. College enrollment between 18 and 24 year olds has increased from 26% to 41%. This increase has significantly impacted the acceptance rate. Columbia University took 65% of students that applied in 1988, in 2014 less than 7%. So all these reasons aside, children have thrive on structure. I don't know how many, I know personally if my child doesn't have his everything down, bedtime, bath time, reading, it's all structure. They thrive on it. We know they do well, much better with structure. And a full day kindergarten experience is a great foundation for our children. They're relying on us to create the best educational system possible. The research is solid, so please let's make the right decision for our children. Thank you, Mrs. Hopper, very much. Do any other members of the public wish to address the board this evening? Please state your name, address, and topic. Good evening, everyone. My name is Amy Pullman. I live at 375 Middlebury Road in Watertown, Connecticut. I'm going to reference my notes a lot because it's been a long day. Um, I live in Watertown with my husband along with our two small children. We both work full time. My husband also owns a business in town. Both of our children have been enrolled in daycare slash preschool since the age of four months. Our daughter's about to turn two and attends Kangaroo's Corner Daycare in Watertown. Our son is about to turn five and just graduated from preschool at Kangaroo's Corner over the summer and started at John Trumbull Primary School in the fall. He's enrolled in the half-day kindergarten, half-day daycare, as you like to call it, program, um, although I believe it's certainly an extension of time, which is what everybody was referencing. Um, the, it, for us, it was an absolute no-brainer in terms of making that decision. Um, there's so many reasons why Watertown should consider implementing full-day kindergarten. Among them, and I'm sorry if I'm reiterating, reiterating some of the other points, but I feel they're important to mention. The majority of schools in the state already do so. How long will it will be, or has it happened already, that students in this town fall behind, giving them a disadvantage, putting them at a disadvantage? Kindergarten has evolved. It's no longer about taking naps, eating paste, and coloring. It's about reading, writing, mathematics, socialization, and structure. It's a bridge year, so to speak, intended to get kids ready to, tra to transition to more structured learning. It's a foundation for success to boost performance in future years. Children who attend kindergarten half day are at a disadvantage, my personal opinion, although I believe there's plenty of research to support that. They're receiving instruction for three hours per day versus six, technically I guess two hours and 45 minutes. I find it hard to believe that at the end of the year the kids who received instruction half the amount of time learned the same amount or were able to retain it as well. How much content can you teach to a group of 19 five-year-olds in less than three hours per day? There are many advantages to full day kindergarten, among them, easing the transition to first grade, 
helping children adjust to the demands of a six-hour day. Many of these kids are already accustomed to full-day programs at preschool with the majority of parents working. Delaying the start of a full-day program seems counterintuitive based on that fact. Kids have more time to develop interests and engage in activities fully, making kindergarten less stressful and frustrating. Participating in full-day kindergarten allows more appropriate challenges for children at all developmental levels. Um, I know that there's a lot of conversation about the age range of kids in kindergarten. Having a longer day likely allows teachers to, to, to um, cater their teaching to kids of various ages. Participating in full-day kindergarten um, also better aligns with the Common Core requirements. It assists parents who already struggle to pay for daycare and preschool with childcare. It allows for more continuity in a child's day, less disruption, and more, focused, more time focused on learning. It allows teachers more time for curriculum planning, incorporating a, incorporating a greater number of lessons that are more expansive, and teachers get to know kids much better and are able to develop a better understanding of their needs and therefore develop lessons to better meet those needs. Found a great quote that really sums it up. Attempting to repair reading skills in fourth grade is far more expensive and risky than guaranteeing good reading skills in kindergarten. Let's be, let's be proactive here and make the right decision for our kids and our future. On a personal note, as I mentioned, we have one child, our son, in full day kindergarten right now and another child, our daughter, who will start in three years. We are paying for daycare, kindergarten tuition, and before and after care. We are seeing firsthand the impact that full day kindergarten can have on a kid with lots of potential, especially when that kid is attending an exemplary school like John Trumbull, where the teachers and administration are passionate and supportive educators whose goal is to help our kids fall in love with learning. If anybody has a question about that, they can certainly look to all the teachers who took time out of their day after teaching our kids all day long, and they can look behind us at the administration who in the f few short months I've had a chance to spend time with, uh, you can already see their, the passion that they have, and it's amazing. Our son has only been at John Trumbull for two months, as I said, but in that short time, has refined his writing, learned several letter sounds, learned at least 10 words by sight, learned them in a snap, as he'd say, learned how to group and sort numbers, gained an increased passion for reading, um, started proudly reading to us, enhanced his social skills, and is able to retain the information in ways that astound me, no doubt due to the extra time he has here at this school daily. Daily I get updates on what he's learning and am consistently surprised at the volume of information. He told me the other day, I need to do a better job of looking with my eyes, listening with my ears, and keeping my body still. I had got the motions too, so I could learn what he was teaching me. He then proceeded to tell me that he did a great job listening that day when others were not, because he he likes how it feels to be a leader. He regularly reinforces for me how to be respectful, responsible, and ready, practicing the three R's he's being taught here at John Trumbull Primary School. All this from a kid who's not quite five yet. Shortly before, and I had intended to share this, um, shortly before he started school, he had made a picture in preschool that somebody mentioned to him was stupid. We don't like to use that word um, in our house, in our vocabulary, but he took it to heart and for a while would reference, oh, I'm stupid, I can't do this. Let me scribble this out. He's a perfectionist who if the A doesn't line up perfectly and the lines don't end in exactly the right place, he's not happy. In his time at John Trumbull, he has gained such confidence in his skills. He no longer uses that word. Um, and as a matter of fact, half the time when he's going to bed, instead of mentioning to me, mom, am I smart? He's telling me all the ways that he is because of the great job you guys have an ability to do because we are sending him for a full day. I often question what our discussions would be like if he didn't attend school full day and can imagine they'd be somewhat different. I imagine he'd be somewhat at a disadvantage and that makes me sad because all children in our town should have the same access, opportunities, and foundation. I urge you to consider moving to a full day program without tuition. Other than cost, I can't imagine many disadvantages and if you need parents to help you figure out where to get the money from, I think you have a whole heck of a lot of volunteers here behind me. It's the right thing to do for our town, the parents, the teachers and administration, and most importantly, our kids. Especially if you want to ensure we're raising future leaders, just like Austin hopes to be, or maybe he already is. 
I appreciate your time and consideration. And on a final note, I also wanted to uh, notify parents, board members, administration that uh, I, in doing my research, I came upon uh, social media is big, and it's nice to be able to disseminate information, collaborate, and support one another. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead. I noticed a lot of towns created a Facebook page, a very collaborative, positive page. Um, and so I'm going to create one called Watertown Connecticut Parents for Full Day Kindergarten. I urge all of you to join it, like it, um, and that way we can support our collective efforts to achieve this goal. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Mrs. Pullman, for your comments, suggestions, and your appreciation for, for the education that your son is now receiving. Thank you. Do any other members of the public wish to address the board this evening? Please remember to state your name, address, and topic. Hi, Samantha Dunbar, um, 216 Farview Circle in Watertown, um, and again, about the kindergarten, full day kindergarten. Um, I'm going to try to keep this brief because I've got one and three asleep and number two <laughs> over there is drifting. So um, I also want to apologize for the chicken. Um, so uh, <laughs> um, I sent both of my older children through full day kindergarten and um, they both shared the same teacher um, and she was beyond phenomenal. It was one of the most amazing experiences we've ever had. Um, I came into Watertown with the hopes that by the time my oldest was in kindergarten, it would be full day. He is now in second grade and is thriving at the second grade level. And my first grader is also thriving at the first grade level. And I do put that largely in part to their full day kindergarten education. Um, this one has about two more years, but I'm still gunning for next year, next year's kindergarten students to come in at a full day. Um, my oldest has special needs, and I felt as though with the full day kindergarten curriculum, he would be better able to absorb all of his information within the, all, you know, the structure that was already set up for him, but then also get that instruction through um, special needs, through speech pathology and, and school psychology. So um, just an extra little boost there uh, for the kids that are going to need to be taken out of the class. Um, you know, when you're in a half day kindergarten, that's extra time that they're taking away from their education. Um, I didn't write anything down. I'm really sorry, so I'm kind of just going off the cuff here. Um, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just I just really wanted to put in my two cents. Um, also, the financial strain on families um, to send our children to public school is kind of silly. Um, and I think that making room in the budget um, or, or trying to work out a full day kindergarten schedule um, would certainly assist people. I know it was a struggle to put our two oldest children through full day kindergarten. Um, and it's going to continue to be a struggle as we move forwards, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to take away from my child's education um, because of money. Um, I just think that we need to make sure that we can get this going and moving forward. So. Uh, that's all I have to say. I'm going to try to get these guys home now, so thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Dunbar. appreciate it very much. <laughs> Do any other members of the public wish to address the board this evening? Hello. Good evening. My name is Carla Ambersini. I'm at 54 Beer Street in Watertown, and I'm here also for full day kindergarten and I won't keep you too long. <laughs> okay. I'm just here to share my experience as um, you haven't heard from anyone yet of that has the experience of half-day kindergarten. Um, we signed up for half-day kindergarten. My son, he is in first grade now, and my daughter, she's four. She will be entering kindergarten in the fall. Uh, I am a stay-at-home mom, and I spend a lot of time in at John Trumbull Primary School, which I adore, and the way that that school is run is impeccable the way that the teachers um, take everything seriously, those children and the love and 
especially the laughter. I don't know if anybody's ever heard Miss Mech in the morning with her lovely jokes, and uh, it's wonderful. It's a great place. Um, so I, I was already paying for preschool. I, I, we decided not to do um, full day kindergarten, and uh, because they kept on saying that it was half day and half day daycare. So to me, I said, well, I don't need daycare. And I wish it wasn't explained that way. Uh, my son had, uh, not for the teachers, the teachers were amazing, and um, he had an awful year. He had an awful year, and he would come home every day crying that he hated school. And this is kindergarten. He didn't want to go. I had to give him a pep talk every day. And um, I didn't understand why, and he said, Mommy, I." there's no time to play, there's no time to do anything. So I became also room mom in that, in that um, class, and I really started to see what was going on. There is no time. These children don't even know who their peers are because they're sitting at their desks for two hours and 45 minutes, and the only time that they actually got up was to go to our, our gym, and still, they have to sit. They don't have time to know their friends, and um, on the other note also was for the teachers. I saw how hard they worked, how there is no time. There's no time to breathe for them. There is not enough time for them to teach what they're teaching and for a fifth grade, uh, for a five-year-old to actually absorb one thing after the other after the other is just, it was super hard. He had um, a wonderful teacher and we got through the year and um, he is now in first grade, and now that I see that he's in school full day, tremendous difference. And I hope that this is a huge consideration with the board. Um, and I understand that the money situation, but this is our children, and I really hope um, for everybody else that goes through this that that their child does have a, a good year. And um, I just, it was just sad, and um, but. We are making the best, and uh, there are some children that do need a little more time than others. I understand that also. But um, just wanted to, to share my experience as my family went through. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mrs. Ambassini. Appreciate your comments very much. Do any other members of the public wish to address the board this evening? <coughs> Remember to state your name, address, and your topic. Hi, my name is Rob Cronk from 46 Edward Avenue here in Watertown. I'm here to talk about full day kindergarten. I'm going to give you guys an aspect that no one here has, as she just did. I have two children that have gone through kindergarten in this town. One in half day, one in full day. The difference is ridiculous. Um, I wasn't going to sign my second son up for full day because it was explained as half day daycare. And it was money that we didn't really have. But then due to the number of people that signed up last year, um, some things in the school changed. And when he got his class assignment four days before school, he was put in a different pod from his brother upstairs. And he went from excited about school to crying and not wanting to go to school. So I immediately called our wonderful principal and asked for some help and was told he had to be put on a waiting list. And glory be to God, six more people signed up for kindergarten the next day, and the waiting list was cleared, and we were able to send him to full day. Not only did he get full day and my son get half day, they both had the same teacher. So I can tell you the difference. The son that went through half day, homework every night of the week as a kindergartner. The son who went through full day, Maybe one night of homework a week. That means no sports, 
no time to play, you're coming home, you're rushed. It was just a much more enjoyable experience for my second son by having recessed. He, le he met kids that weren't in his class. My older son, he met the kids that were in his class. That was about it. My younger son would come home and say, oh, I played with Johnny today. Well, who's Johnny? Is he in your class? No, he's in. I met him on the playground during recess. So socially, he was a lot more active. You know, he learned a lot more. His teacher told me, I don't know how I did this in a half-day session. I don't know how we crammed that material. With all the things they're expected to learn now with Common Core, it is impossible. And for parents who both work to have to come home and spend 45 minutes a night with a kindergartner who does not know how to do homework on his own, there's no way, no how that kid is doing his homework by himself. It's, it's almost impossible. You, you don't get to experience being a child because you go to school, you go to daycare from school, and then you come home and you spend what little time you have with your parents for the evening doing your homework. It, it just it needs change. It needs to be full day. Um, it's, it's the right thing to do for the children. These kids are five years old. They need to be able to be kids and not just go to school. That's all I've got. Thank you, Mr. Kronk. I appreciate your comments very much. And I appreciate you sharing that example with us. It was it's very important for us to hear. Do any other members of the public wish to address the board this evening? Remember to state your name, address, and topic. Sure. My name is Rebecca Zadlow. I live at 226 Beach Avenue. Um, I wasn't expecting to come up and I don't really have, I guess it's more of like a question just because I'm hearing the last two stories and I really wonder how this affects first grade. Because if you have kids coming from half day and full day, how is that fair for the parents that are paying for that full day and those kids are at an advantage and the kids going in at a disadvantage? I just thought it would be something to look at and how that affects the teachers and the whole environment. I do have, um, I have a, 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 my youngest is in pre-K four at St. Mary Magdalene and you know, I'm really on the fence about what I'm gonna do. I do have a son at John Trumbull who's in second grade. I also have a son um, in fourth grade at Judson. I love the Watertown school system and I really, you know, want her to be able to be the strongest she could be and I just feel like hearing this, it's, it's kind of concerning to me that somebody could be at such a disadvantage and all in the same classroom. So, explain to us is is time. Right, I hear that, but I also considering when they get to first grade and they come together because it's not just. I mean, there's kids in my son's class last year that were half day and full day, and I just wonder how a teacher manages seeing that difference in between those kids. Dr. Parlato or Mrs. Mecca, would you like to address the question directly? Thank you. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for that question. Um, we, we do find slight differences in achievement, but there's a major difference in attention and focus with getting through the day. And I want to guarantee you, if your child is, has been in a half-day program, our first grade teachers are working really hard. It does not matter to them if they've been in a half-day program or a full day, uh, the extended uh, daycare part. Um, when children come in, we get a, uh, we take, the, they take the DRA, the teacher administers a one-on-one -on -one individualized uh, reading assessment with each child, and it gives us a level. So all of the children, uh, that happens th from September to October 8th, we just finished our testing window, and the teachers look at those levels, and they instruct the children at that particular level. So you might have kids coming in, you know, at a level four or a level eight, but the teachers pull small groups, a group at the uh, at the four is taken and a group at the eight is taken. So they will, you know, they will meet the children's needs as first grade teachers. Thank you, Mrs. Mecca. Rebecca, do you, that satisfy your question? Yeah, it was really just something to think about. It was, okay. just, I, it was just kind of a thought that as I'm hearing these stories, it just doesn't seem fair to everybody. It just doesn't seem fair. Thank you for asking the question. I agree. It was a very important question. And I thank Mrs. Mecca for the answer. Do any other members of the public wish to address the board this evening? Please state your name, address, and 
Anna Flamingo, 264 Pondview Drive. Um, my experience was truly different because my son um, entered kindergarten full time and it was truly explained the benefit of being in kindergarten full time. It was not explained that it was a daycare in the afternoon. It was truly explained in terms of that they will have a full day of learning the same information a student was learning in the half day and the benefit of the entire day. Um, to us, it was a no-brainer because he was learning three languages at home, so we felt like he needed a full day. Um, but I did feel like a lot of other moms that I did speak to really felt that they could not afford it um, and that that's the reason why they were not going towards the full day of kindergarten. So I just want to urge you to really reconsider because I really do feel that the Watertown children should not be left behind. And by not offering this, you have a pool of children that are going to be left behind because parents just can't afford it. So I really urge you to consider this um, to build long-term leaders. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Flamenco. <laughs> Do any other members of the public wish to address the board this evening? Call. Do any other members of the public wish to address the board this evening? The board, I'd like to thank all of the members that, all of the members of the audience who did address the board this evening. Participation from the public is something that we take very seriously, and we strongly believe that it's our job as elected officials to represent the public. So I appreciate the time and the effort, passion in which you put in to come and speak to us tonight. The late hour, we understand the confines of people's schedules and we appreciate it very much. Thank you. Moving on, we're going to go back to the superintendent report, pick up where we left off on the schedule and policies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again to Dr. Parlato and Mrs. Mecca and the Kindergarten Study Committee. I know that a lot of work was put into this evening, and we are appreciative of that. Likewise, we're appreciative of a number of parents who came out to hear the presentation and also to speak tonight, including some that had little ones with them that made it a lot longer than I think some of mine would have made it and very well behaved, so thank you. Um, we're going to go back to under my report what was number two, uh, discussion review of the following policies. The Policy and Labor Committee met this evening prior to the Board of Education meeting to discuss a number of changes, potential changes in policy that are necessary because of changes in Connecticut general statutes. I uh, want to make clear that all of the changes that were discussed this evening at the policy committee are being recommended because there have been changes to Connecticut state law that require them. So we have taken a number of our existing policies which are on this list and taken um, the Board of Education's legal counsel's recommended changes to ensure that we are in compliance with state law, some of which went into effect retroactively to July 1st. Um, because the policies went home for a first read on Friday to all Board of Education members and those changes were detailed in that first read and also because we had the, um, in, in the end, the entire board with us this evening for the policy committee meeting. Again, thank you, uh, board members, that all of you were able to attend the policy and labor committee meeting even though you're not all. Um, officially members, it made it easier to move the, on this this evening. And that said, I won't bore the board members with going through the policies again, obviously, because that would be quite redundant. However, just for the record, as the Board of Education meeting, I'd like to just bullet through each one of the policies that we discussed tonight um, with a, a general statement of what the change is for each one. I'll start again with number one policy. Uh, 5010, the administration of student medications, the, that again is an existing policy, and the changes establish procedures for the administration <coughs> of epinephrine and ep anti-epileptic medications for students in our schools. Number two, policy 
55R, the administrative regulations regarding immunizations. This is an existing Board of Education policy. And the um, state required legal changes would give continue to allow parents the ability to turn in statements of religious exemptions for immunizations, but now requires certification from a person on the list of possibilities for certification that the state has established. I'm using the word certification loosely because in some ways it's actually just acknowledgement of a statement that a parent has provided about religious exemption. Number three, policy number 1200 regarding pesticide application on school property. This is already an existing policy. State law required changes in notification procedures to district, employee, uh, uh, district employees, students, and parents. In other words, to notify all occupants of the building of our pest management plan. Number four, policy number 5110 administration regulations regarding attendance and truancy. State law has changed regarding the reporting mechanisms for reporting the number of students who are considered habitually truant and or absent and has required that the superintendent establish a committee to review excessive truancy and excused absences and report to the state accordingly. Um, again, of note, we already have committees at each one of our schools the law has required this to do, us to do this, but it was not already in effect. Uh, policy number 4130, reports of child abuse or neglect. Um, <coughs> this changed some of the regulations related to reporting um, abuse, specifically related to sexual abuse. If sexual abuse in any way is, is uh, a possibility with a student, even if they are over 18, as we know some of our students will remain with us until they are 21 years old by law. And therefore, state law has changed. If there is any uh, suspect of sexual abuse, we must notify DCF, even if the child is no longer a child in the eyes of the law, in other words, is over 18. It also makes it a uh, possible felony charge when DCF reports are not done in regards to the regulations for any school employee, teacher, administrator, or other employee who does not make a call of even a suspected neg uh, neglect or abuse. Number six, policy number 4020R, that is administrative regulations regarding concussion training for athletic coaches. This, again, is required by state law, but it simply will put into our policy what we are already doing as a district which is that each of our coaches receives concussion training and that we send home notifications to parents regarding what signs of concussions are. Um, number seven, policy 6015, curricular exemptions, uh, expands the subject matter in which a student can out out of, opt out of participating in. So in other words, there are certain curricular items such as um, sexual education in the schools that parents can currently opt out of this expands in HIV education this expands some of the list regarding new state curricula not Watertown based curricula but new state curricula that may be handed down it allows parents um, or guardians of students to exempt their children number eight policy number 4030 employee use of the district computer this solidifies regulations that we already have in this district related to employee use of our computers for official business and also uh, related to personal social networking that um, district employees may use outside of the district or in, in the district. Um, policy 4040 employment checks. This expands the capability of districts in Connecticut, the new legislation to make it clear to potential applicants that, that our background checks may expand to other states if they come to us and tell us that they have worked in another state. Uh, this policy makes it a normal procedure that we will check uh, with the equivalent of DCF and the police departments in other states. Certainly things that we were doing to, at some level as it was, but this solidifies it as policy and makes it state law. Policy 5100. Administrative regulations regarding health assessments and screenings. This, again, existing policy, but the law changed the ages at which vision and hearing screenings are done in public schools. So the policy will be updated with those new ages.
uh, policy 5100. Number 11, administrative regulations regarding section 504. That um, allows the district to continue really to discipline students who may be um, categorized as having a disability, but who may have engaged in possession of drugs or alcohol on school grounds. This makes it a regular part of policy that students may be disciplined in the same manner as other students who are not classified as having a disability when it comes to drugs and alcohol. And again, yes? For board members seeing that the policy numbers are both the same for both the last one on administrative regulations regarding health assessment screenings and the section 504. Um, both have the same policy number because as um, our policy book stands right now, any administrative regulations come under policy 5100 and they're only delineated by their title. Correct. Thank you. This is <coughs> clarifying that. Um, number 12, policy 1350, which is our prohibition against smoking. The law has now defined that vapors and e-cigarettes are to be added to the list of prohibitive smoking materials. So that is an update to the policy that those things can also not be used on school grounds. Uh, policy 5140, student use of district computer. This gives us the same ability to establish regulations for student use of our district computers and um, social media related to school district affairs. Those are the bullet points of what we discussed at great length at the policy committee meeting earlier. Um, and as I mentioned at the end of the policy committee meeting, because we also as we adjourned needed to get to the wall of honor ceremony. If there were any additional questions that you have thought of in the meantime, board members, um, please ask and, and I'll go back to the policies at this point. Board members have any questions regarding the policies? I'd like to reiterate Dr. Cardamolo's comments in the beginning about all board members attending that policy meeting. Although you were not required to as non-committee members, um, it certainly aided in the process and I appreciate your understanding of the importance of that. Can I say one thing? Please. I, I'd just like to reiterate about the policy. This board uh, a while back had the foresight to go through our, our policies and update them, uh, contract it out to an outside law firm. And it was one of the best things I think we ever did. I think it uh, brings us up to date, brings us up uh, currently to the new state regulations, and I think it was a move that uh, will bear fruit as of right, right, uh, right now. So uh, I thank uh, I thank the board for uh, having foresight to do that. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. I'd also add um, that Mr. Lambert Lambert and I attended the a legislative update summary at the educational law firm that we hire and they provided that to us free of charge and we spent some time going over all of the new state regulations and within a very short amount of time Dr. Cardamola was able to present these policies to make sure that we are all up to date with the new legislative regulations as she said when they were passed they were also backdated or made retroactive to July 1 of the year we're in. So it was very important that we get through this. So thank you to Dr. Cardamol and to Tom for attending that session. Thank you. And again, this is something that because the policies were updated uh, prior to my arrival actually with you as superintendent, we need to keep our eye on the updates that continually come out to ensure the, that we are in compliance as a district and also to reduce the liability um, of the Board of Education when we have out-of-date policies that are out of compliance because that that is the major reason for continuing to do this to make sure that we are compliant with state and federal law. Um, so I expect, fortunately or unfortunately, that we will be together more often because there have been so many changes at the state level. Um, if you don't have any other questions for me about the policies, on. So we are moving on as scheduled. I believe that would bring us, we've already done public participation. I think we are, oh, excuse me, skipping over. We had a the Board of Education meeting dates uh, for the upcoming year. Uh, 
Mrs. Crotty and I discussed earlier this week, just for the record, it is, a, is a little bit odd to some of us that work in a school district calendar the way that we do the Board of Education meeting date. They are seen as public meetings that don't necessarily coincide with the school calendar. Um, so I'm just saying that as something that I think we are thinking about moving forward because until we have this conversation tonight, we don't have um, legitimately scheduled Board of Education meetings for the remainder of the current school year that we're in from January to June. I think that it might be something we might want to consider as we move forward looking at in, in future years for scheduling the dates. Uh, in your packet, you did receive the proposed meeting dates for 2016. And again, it's not for school year, it's 2016 from January until December. Keep us on the current schedule, which is the second and the fourth Monday of every month, and one meeting in July, one meeting in August, and one meeting in December. You see there is one change um, Tuesday, October 11th. That is because the second Monday, as we just had to do uh, at the last board meeting in um, October, is typically on Columbus Day. So we push that forward to Tuesday, as we have in other years. Okay. Are there any questions about that or any discussion about the dates? Thank you, Dr. Cardamola. I appreciate your willingness to jump around the agenda this evening. to letter I in the agenda, budget summary report. Jill Brown. In accordance with Watertown Board of Education Policy 3010, the business office submitting the first quarter budget status report this evening. This report details expenditures and encumbrances for fiscal year 2016 for the months of July, August, and September. And in keeping with our established me method of budget reporting and the state chart of accounts, <clears throat> the current operating budget has been broken down into object summaries and details budgets and expenditures for quarter one, year to date, and annual projections in each object. For our staffing needs, projects 110 through 130, overall we're operating very close to our budgeted amount of $23.2 million. We are within 1.5% of our budgeted amount. Our encumbrances for staffing are under budget in the areas of certified and non-certified staff, substitutes, and coaches. We are, however, running somewhat over budget for homebound tutors based upon what we've seen for injuries and medical issues requiring homebound tutoring this early on in the year. We are projecting out a negative $6,000 year-end balance. We will continue to monitor this closely and may request a budget transfer at a future meeting if needed. In all other areas, with the exception of custodial and maintenance supplies, we are operating within our Many supplies are ordered and stocked at the start of the school year. In order to perform summer maintenance, we expect the budget for maintenance supplies to come in as planned. Overall, we're operating within our current budget and project to be doing so by 0.46%. At this time, we are requesting a transfer of funds within Fund 13. Fund 13 is the rollover account for remaining expenditures for fiscal year 2015. As you will recall, we allocated our excess cost grant funds for our students requiring special education services to tuition, transportation, and professional services. We're requesting that from the transportation object line, uh, we transfer a total of $49,401 professional services and also $2,767 to tuition. This is a reallocation of the special education grant funds received back in February and May, and we're just asking to transfer them other special education services. And that's my first quarter report. So in total, the transfer dollar all relates to special education services, transportation, tuition for output. Yes. 
the board members have any questions for Mrs. Brown? Any questions on the status report or the transfers? Okay, thank you, Mrs. Brown. Moving on to my report, I'll be very brief this evening. I'd like to talk about the upcoming municipal elections <coughs> and the importance of voting in your community. At the November 9th Board of Education meeting, we will welcome our town clerk, Lisa Dalton, as she swears in newly elected Board of Education members. Who gets sworn in and who takes a seat on your Board of Education that evening is up to you. Your vote determines who will carry the work, carry on the work that has been started and who will give their time on behalf of our students. You get to decide who collaborates and who make policy decisions that affect your sisters, your cousins, your friends, your spouses and uncles, who are taught by and also employed by the district. It's up to you to determine who will keep our budget efficient and effective and who will work to ensure this district continues to move in the right direction with the right leaders. Don't give up your right to make those decisions on behalf of Watertown and Oakville. Vote in the election on November 3rd and be part of the decision that we will all live with. It's that important. This evening, I was going to say I have the pleasure. I'm not quite sure I feel this way. <laughs> I'd like to recognize a colleague on the Board of Education, Mr. Don Orsini. Mr. Orsini was appointed to the Board of Education on March 10th, 2014. And since then, he has been doing a great job fulfilling the responsibilities that come with it. When Don shared with me that he would not be running in this year's election, I was disappointed, truly. I think I expressed that to him multiple times. I wasn't disappointed in him, but rather at the thought of not being able to collaborate with him anymore. I have had the very good pleasure of working directly with Mr. Orsini in a variety of circumstances over his two years on the Board of Education. But what stands out most to me about his service to the district is his thoughtful decision-making process. Whether we were at a board retreat interviewing prospective administrative candidates or taking part in negotiations with union contracts, Don always gave great consideration towards the task at hand. Whenever he spoke, he offered insightful suggestions and asked relative important questions that would always keep us focused. We have had some agonizing decisions to make together over the last two years. And during those times, Mr. Orsini always, always remained on point and thoughtfully, and I stress very thoughtfully, balanced the needs of our employees, the needs of our students, and the needs of our residents. I believe that Don Orsini served the town of Watertown quite well, and I'm sorry to see him go. So on behalf of the Board of Education, I would like to thank you very much for your time, your talent, and your dedicated service. We will miss you. going to move on to letter L in the agenda, committee reports. Mrs. Rinaldi, do you have anything from curriculum and instruction to report this evening? <laughs> Thank you. Policy and labor, Mr. Vicenzi. As mentioned before, we met at 6 o'clock uh, this evening, and the items will be up for uh, approval in just a few minutes. Thank you, Mr. Vicenzi. Budget and finance from Mr. Lambert. No report at this time. And back to you, Mr. Lambert, for facilities and operations. Also no report at this time. Thank you very much. <coughs> I move to Mr. Murkowski for governance and community engagement. Thank you, Mr. Murkowski. Moving on to letter M, communications. Mrs. Wilk, do you have anything to report this evening? And I have 
Sorry, I'm short. Um, we did receive another one today, and it says, Dear Dr. Carnamola, our family appreciates the, the inclusion of Peter Klemchuk's lifetime achievements on the wall of honor and would like to commend the Board of Education members for their efforts in continuing to focus on excellence in education. The wall of honor is testimony to the Watertown Board of Education's dedication to providing quality education and recognizing graduates' achievements. Peter, Peter P. Klemchek was fortunate to enjoy benefits provided him through the academic curriculum and competent, caring teaching staff. Thank you for recognizing my husband's achievements. Sincerely, Helen Klemchek. Thank you, Mrs. Wilk, for being open to the record. Appreciate it. Moving on to letter N, action items. Consideration of the approval of the 2016 schedule of meeting dates for the Watertown Board Adamola went over that with us. We had a chance to look at them um, as of Friday in our packet. Uh, do I have a motion. Yes. Madam Chair, I move that the board approve of the 2016 schedule. Thank you, Mrs. Wilk. Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Mrs. Rinaldi. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on to number two, consideration of the approval of the Board of Education policies. We are going to make a slight change in the agenda. Where you see the bullet points, we will refer those starting with a letter, small letter A and continue through the alphabet to letter M. I would ask for a motion on the administration of student medications. Yes, Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve the updated policy uh, 5010, Administration of Student Medications, as presented. Thank you, Mr. Vicenzi. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Are there any questions or discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on to D. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve the updated policy. 5055R, Administrative regula Regulations Regarding Immunizations, as presented. Thank you, Mr. Pacenzi. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Any questions or discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on to letter D. C. I'm sorry, C. That's okay. Thank Madam you. Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve of policy. 1200 pesticide application on school property as presented. Thank you, Mr. Vicenzi. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Are there any questions or discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on to letter D. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve of policy 5110, administrative regulations regarding attendance and truancy as presented. Thank you, Mr. Vicenzi. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Questions or discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on to letter E. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve of policy number 4130, reports of child abuse or neglect reporting as presented. Thank you, Mr. Vicenzi. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Are there any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Moving to letter F. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve of policy number 4020R, administrative regulations regarding concussions training for athletic coaches as presented. Thank you, Mr. Pacenzi. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Are there any questions or discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on to item G. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve of policy number 6015, curricular exemptions as presented. Thank you, Mr. Vicenzi. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Are there any questions or discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Item H. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve a policy number 4030, employee use of district computer as presented. Thank you, Mr. Vicenzi. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on to letter I. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve policy number 4040, yeah, 4040 employment checks as presented. Thank you, Mr. Vicenzi. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? 
Motion carries. Moving on to item J. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve of policy 5100, Administrative Regulations Regarding Health Assessments and Screenings, as presented. Thank you, Mr. Vicenzi. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on to letter K. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve of policy 5100 regarding section 504 as presented. Thank you, Mr. Vicenzi. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on to letter L. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve of policy 1350, prohibition against smoking as presented. Thank you, Mr. Vicenzi. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. And moving on to the last policy, letter M. Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve of policy 5140, student <coughs> use of the district computer as presented. Thank you, Mr. Vicenzi. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Very much. Moving on to item three, consideration to approve the following allocations and transfers of funds. We're going to separate both of those into two bullet, uh, the two bullets into A and B. The first will be on the transfer of 49,401 transportation project, project 510 to professional technical services. Do we have a motion? Yes, Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve of the transfer of $49,401 from Transportation, Object 510, to Professional Technical Services, Object 301, as recommended. Thank you, Mrs. Rinaldi. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Murkowski. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to the second which would be letter B, approving the transfer of $2,767 from transportation to tuition. Do we have a motion? Yes, Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Education approve of the transfer of $2,767 transportation, object 510, to tuition, object 560, as recommended. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Murkowski. Is there any discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on to <coughs> number four, consideration of the approval of the acceptance of a gift. Um, there's a nonprofit organization called Donor Choose where anybody can go and request um, certain items for any matter. And we have had um, some teachers put requests on this website, and Mrs. Matthews had requested um, through Donor Cho uh, Choose um, for three Samsung Chromebooks, and she, through donation, charitable donations from family and friends in the public, uh, she was able to receive those from Donor Choose and, um, Choose, and we are very thankful for that. The value of those three Chromebooks is $927.29 like to have a motion to accept that gift, please. Madam Chair, I move that the board accept the gift of three Samsung Chromebooks in the amount of $927.29 to Judson School given by Donor Choice, a nonprofit organization. It is recommended that a letter of thanks be sent to the donor for this generous gift. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. Any All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on to agenda item O. Future agenda items and board member comments. Do any board members have any future agenda items they'd like to recommend or any comments they'd like to give at this time? Mr. Orsini? I just have a comment. Um, I would like to thank the board, superintendent, and everyone else uh, for this recognition tonight. Um, but I should really be recognizing you for having the opportunity to serve on the board. The past year and a half has been a learning experience for me. During that time, I have come to understand what it takes to run a school district. I have had a chance to see some of the great things that our, our kids are exposed to and why we should treat our schools as an asset. At the same time, realizing that there are many challenges and issues in maintaining a high-level education system. I've also learned that it's easy to criticize people 
sitting in these seats, but until you've actually sat in one and had to make the tough decisions, you don't appreciate it, what it takes. In today's world, it's, everyone is looking for quick fixes and easy answers. But the old saying goes, if it was that easy, anyone could do it. So even though I will no longer be a board member, I will still be active in helping to maintain and improve our schools. And again, I would like to thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Rossini. Any other board members wish to make a comment? Mr. Lambert. Yes, I would, uh, Mayor Don's uh, um, speech uh, about his experience on the board. You know, it's sometimes when you're, you volunteer to do something, uh, you have a lot of issues about <coughs> how to go about it, how to do it, how to, how to do certain things. And uh, what makes us better board members is uh, the people that we meet, the people that we work with, the uh, hardworking people like Don through union negotiations from six at night till three in the morning, hung in there. Uh, and uh, he uh, made us a better board by his uh, presence here. And I do thank Don. Uh, I think uh, Don has become a friend and a, and, a, and, a, and a co-worker here on the board. And I do appreciate his tenure on the board of it. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Are there any other comments from board members at this time? Mr. Mikowski. Well, I'd like to uh, um, share in Mr. Lambert's sentiments. Don, I wish I had more of an opportunity to work with you, um, but uh, I thank you for your service and um, look forward to continuing to carry, carry the torch and um, look forward to, to joining in some of those negotiations in the future. Um, secondly, I'd like to thank all the parents that came out tonight. Um, I think it's a, it, it's a testament to when there is a passion for something that people come forward. They, they voice their opinions. They, they share the good, the bad, um, and, and everything in between. And I think the purpose of my comment is to ask parents for more of that. Um, I think that more engagement will only make our Board of Education, our schools, our community stronger. Um, we know that time is limited, and not everybody can do everything. But just knowing what's going on in the schools, what's going on in our community, sharing, understanding what's, what's going on with the budget, those little things I think will go a long way and will help achieve things like passing the budget the first time by improving our policies, supporting our teachers, um, and making sure um, that our students have every, uh, every opportunity to reach their full potential. So I just want to formally thank everybody that came out tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mikowski. Any other board members have future agenda items or comments they'd like to make? May I? Please. I, I didn't want to uh, speak earlier until we formally recognized Don's departure, so I apologize because it's your time, not my time, but I didn't want to send out off Don without saying something about the professionalism that you have brought to the board, the support that you have brought to the schools, the board as a whole, and, and certainly to me as a new superintendent, not so new anymore, but I, but I, at this point, it feels like it's been about 30 years, but <laughs> it's, only, it's only not quite a year and a half. Um, I had the pleasure to know Don as a parent from the high school before I knew Don as a board member, and one of the things that I learned as a superintendent that I would not have had the opportunity to learn as a principal was that Don has a pulse on the stakeholders and the community in the town. He always brought advice to me and, and to this board as a whole that recognized um, many facets and opinions from town that would help us to make more educated decisions and to consider all of the possibilities as we moved forward. And certainly Don is not the only person on this board that does that. I think we're, we're lucky that we have, have a board of ed full of individuals who can do that. But Don, you are the one that I know that is, is moving on from us, and we will miss your perspective. We will miss your hard work. It isn't a joke, certainly, that you were with us for nine hours at negotiations, and that was just one of the many evenings that you gave up to be with us on, uh, to do the work of this board, both officially and unofficially. There, was pretty, there has pretty much not been one event that I have attended in this town after hours 
in the community that Don was not present for also. So I have seen with my own eyes the commitment that you have to the town of Watertown and to our schools and to this Board of Ed, and you will be missed. Thank you. Any more comments or suggestions? Sorry, I know Please, everybody's Mrs. tired. I just wanted to say, Don, it's been a pleasure working with you, and I wish you the best, and I'm sure, you know, I will see you at the next <laughs> event. Thank you, Mrs. Wilk. Any other comments? Okay. Thank you. Moving on to our last round of public participation. Do any members of the public <coughs> wish to address the board this evening? Do any members of the public wish to address the board this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on to motion to Thank you, Mr. Lambert. Do we have a second? I second it. Thank you, Mr. Vicenzi. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Tensions? Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.